Hello, have you seen this demo? Yes, you have, I know you have. Frankly, what platform hasn't been graced with this demo? Ever since 2018, and concerningly once before that, it has gone from the obvious like the Amiga, the less obvious like MATLAB, to the fairly obscure like the Mega Drive. Perhaps the most famous was when a sole coder spent several months porting it to the SNES and released it at Revision 2019, where it was met with thunderous applause. It was so good, the compo immediately ended without showing any following demos. Hello, have you seen this microcontroller? You might not have. It's called the Raspberry Pi Pico, and it was released in 2020 by the Raspberry Pi Company Foundation Limited in what appears to be a move to end Arduino's whole career. Essentially, it is a PCB with a single MCU solder to it. The MCU is designed by Raspberry Pi themselves, so-called Raspberry Silicon, and it boasts a whole 264 kilobytes of RAM, it's not a typo, dual ARM Cortex M0 Plus processor cores at 133 megahertz, and fancy peripherals like the PIO, which is the GPIO's equivalent of an Amiga copper, but more flexible. All of this is amazing, considering the Pico only costs $4 US, and the chip, the RP2040, can go as low as $1. You could say it's a bit like the Acorn Archimedes. You'd be wrong, but you could say that. In an astounding case of this is all secretly my university coursework, hello Professor Zollner, I, along with the rest of the students in one of the modules on my course, were given two of these for free to experiment with. And as soon as I got one, I immediately thought, display output. Hold on to your socks, because it turns out that there's enough GPIO pins that, along with some resistors, the Pico itself can drive a full VJ output entirely from software, no extra chips. There's even a board you can buy, the Pico VGA demo board. This one's made by Pimeroni. It includes SD cards, audio out, and VGA out. There's also an official Raspberry Pi SDK that handles the GPIO software for you. And so, in around 500 lines of C code, I managed to combine this demo with this microcontroller. So, are you ready everyone? Ready to see the same goddamn animation again? Almost feels like Bad Apple at this point? Well, here it is! Yep, that's... That's the animation. I will admit that the PIO is doing an amazing job of keeping the analog signal stable. We're also technically rendering at 480p in pixel doubling, but Yep, that's the 60fps version of STNIC2000. Also, I bought an expensive HDMI capture card to get this footage, I hope you're all happy. This is great and all. Wow, a new platform. But I feel like I'm retreading old ground. 60fps is nice, but I got that without much optimization at all. On one core. This chip can clearly do more. Let's kick it up a notch. Here in the code is a mutex which is held whilst the screen is being rendered. Oh, by the way, I, this is like the first ever C project I've ever written. And I think it's the first time I've used CMake as well. So like, please be gentle. While this is held on core one by the VGA driver, the polygon renderer on core zero cannot flip the display. This implements a V-Sync. Now let's see what happens if we move it down a bit and place it here, so that instead of triggering on VSync, it triggers on HSync. I won't remove it completely because that produces extra artifacts, but this essentially decouples the two cores. Let's take another look at that animation, now that the frame rate is unbounded. Ready? As a minor flashing images warning. Now that's fast. Some back of the built-in OS calculator maths says that the animation here is rendering out over the course of 4.9 seconds at just over 360 FPS. That's amazing for a software-only solution on a microcontroller. I mean, look at this thing. It's so small. Now, I could stop there and let you move on with your lives, but where's the fun in that? The Pico is slightly under its max clock at the moment, so let's turn it up. Currently, the Pico is running at 100 MHz, which is slightly under the max rated clock of the RP2040 at 133. So, 
Let's completely ignore that and whack it up to 250 megahertz. The Pi Pico can actually handle an overclock really well, considering it's now running at like double the speed, more than double the speed. And these things are, what, four dollars, I have very little to lose. Once more, before I continue, a warning of flashing images. Darwin, don't blink or you'll miss it. Did you see it? Let's play it again. It's now running very, very fast. It's about 1.8 seconds for the loop, which places it at, brace yourselves, over 1,000 FPS. That's, that's utterly ludicrous. There's like, this thing must draw basically no power. It's an educational toy. Like, I think, I genuinely think I could get PS1 performance out of this in, like, textured rendering. Now, I could stop here, and I will. The release archive will contain all the .EF2 files for the vSync, no vSync, and overclock modes, as well as some other goodies. Thanks for watching.